Hi and welcome to Politics Tech Lightning. I'm celebrating my one year of making YouTube videos by going back to where it all started. Namely, my first video. It was a video where I explained the concept of a forward and reverse proxy servers. I initially got the idea from my many meetings where we talked about inbound and outbound internet access. Several of the technical engineers in that meeting they were kept on mixing up the concept of a forward and a reverse proxy. So here we are today, one year later. In honor of my first video, I will now explain the proxy servers in the public cloud Azure. This topic, it still remains important and super exciting. So let's get into it. Here we go. While we will focus on the usage of proxy servers in Azure, we first need to start with the basics. There are two types of proxy servers, a forward proxy and a reverse proxy. A forward proxy, it allows resources such as virtual machines in your infrastructure to access the public internet. This is for outbound internet access. A reverse proxy, it allows external, usually users from the public internet to access your internal resources. Security is the main driver for this, as you can imagine. With a forward proxy, you can control which resources you can access on the public internet. The reverse proxy allows you to control who and what can access your internal resources. Now, what happens if you're going to migrate to the public cloud? Well, as an architect, you have to present a solution for both outbound and inbound internet traffic. It can get quite complicated because most companies they already have a forward and a reverse proxy solution on-premise. So, should you use this existing on-premise solution for workloads placed in the cloud? Now, that's exactly what we will answer with this video. First, we will have a look at the different services available that we have in Azure for proxy functionality. Let's start with the forward proxy. There are a couple of native Azure offerings that are very interesting. Azure Firewall is the first one that comes to mind. It's quite costly, but in addition to a forward proxy, it also acts as a full-fledged firewall. However, if you only need a forward proxy, it's uh, a bit of an overkill, but it does offer you good forward proxy capabilities, such as URL whitelisting. Then we have the Azure Net Gateway. Strictly speaking, uh, this is only to allow resources in Azure to access the public internet. It lacks many of the security features which are required in a corporate environment. So it does not have a way to, for example, white or blacklist URLs. So I will definitely not go further into details about the NAT gateway. But for forward proxy functionality, it's mainly the Azure firewall that's taken into consideration as a native service here. There are also excellent marketplace products which can be set up. Now, if you only need forward proxy functionality, you can deploy, for example, Squid proxy servers. They're a lot cheaper than if you compare it to an Azure Firewall, and it also comes with a good set of security features. But, of course, with this solution, you have virtual machines and a bit more management uh, with this option. What about reverse proxy servers? There's also many different vendors here with awesome solutions available, such as CloudGuard. Now, of course, they do also a lot more than just reverse proxy functionality. So let's look at two common services that we have available to us in Azure. We have the Application Gateway and the Azure Front Door. Now, the Application Gateway is a very feature-rich reverse proxy. It has a component called the Web Application Firewall, WAF, which I always recommend to enable when there's connectivity coming from the public internet to your cloud environment. It works on the OSI layer 7 with support for HTTP, HTTPS, WebSocket and HTTP2 protocols. As a reverse proxy, you can send the traffic onto different backends depending on the URL they want to visit. I have a separate video regarding the application gateway, so check out the description in the below for the link. The other service, Azure Frontor, it can also act as a reverse proxy. It offers similar functionality as an application gateway, but it works more on a global level. In other words, 
it can act as a reverse proxy and send traffic to different regions. That's in stark contrast with Application Gateway, which is more focused on a regional service. So we now know that we have different options in Azure for both forward and reverse proxying. The more complicated question is, how do we approach this in a real-world scenario? Now, most enterprises, as I mentioned, they already have an existing forward and reverse proxy solution located on-premise. They may be used to the reports and security that's being offered today from this proxy server, and they're a little bit reluctant to change this. So, is it really good practice to route all the traffic from Azure to an on-premise forward proxy? Well, technically it's possible, and even in some scenarios it may even be a good solution. Let's say you have multiple cloud environments, there is then only one internet breakout to manage. Though it really depends on the situation, however, I always prefer to send the traffic directly from Azure to the internet, of course, through a forward proxy located in Azure then. Azure Firewall is quite a good solution with several management options to control which URLs are allowed and not allowed. We can say similar things about the reverse proxy. Do you really want the response to an internet user to be sent through all the hops from Azure to on-prem and only then to the end user? Well, you always want to minimize latency and traffic by sending out, out through the shortest, fastest possible way. This can, for example, be an application gateway in Azure. It then doesn't have to traverse to the on-premise first. Now, we're going to answer the most challenging question regarding proxy servers. What if the company demands that certain outgoing internet traffic, for example, application traffic and only application traffic, goes through on-premise, but all other traffic goes through the forward proxy in Azure. Well, so as you can imagine, it can be a bit tricky because we have to divide up the internet traffic between application traffic and all other traffic. Well, always try to avoid this scenario and I will explain a little bit why. If we go down this path, you will, first of all, you will always have to keep track of two different URL lists, one for the application and one for the other traffic. These lists usually grow quite large and they need constant maintenance and updates. For virtual machine, this quickly becomes a complex situation. In Windows OS, you can specify a forward proxy server, which is then valid for the entire system. In addition to that, you also can configure a long list of exceptions. And when you have many applications, uh, the list of exceptions, exclusion, becomes really a big pain to manage. Now, Linux is a bit easier, as most applications on Linux, they actually have a per app proxy setting. So per application, you can define if they're going to use a proxy and which proxy to use. So that means that in most instances, you configure that per application. So you then can configure that application uses the proxy server on premise and the rest of the traffic uses the Azure forward proxy. So I hope you understand the challenge we're facing with this. Now, there are a couple of ways we do can offer a technical solution. Uh, one of those ways can be, for example, to set up a third party forward proxy in Azure. For example, put up virtual machines running Squid. You can then point all the workload in Azure to these proxy servers. Under these proxy servers, you then configure which URLs are directed to on-premise. The remaining URLs then goes to the Azure firewall. But let's not forget that the on-premise forward proxy, the URLs over there also needs to be maintained and updated. Try to keep your proxy server and routing as simple as possible. Preferably route all traffic through one route, either directly from Azure to the internet or through the on-premise network. All traffic, one route, best possible way. So, this is what I wanted to convey regarding using proxy servers in Azure. In fact, the principle and theories I've explained are applicable to most environments. So, 
what are the key takeaways from this video? Well, there are native services for both forward and reverse proxy functionality. Azure File is a very common product to be used as forward proxy. If you only need forward proxy functionality, then look into the cheaper alternatives such as using virtual machines with Squid. Application Gateway and Azure Front Door can function as a reverse proxy. Keep the traffic flow as simple as possible. And those are the key takeaways. So I found, hope you found this very exciting and useful. Until next time, take care. See you.